Hi there, welcome to the video. Uh, in this one, I'm going to take you through the steps of installing iNav firmware onto a flight controller. Now, in this example, I'm going to be using um, the Matek F405 WMN flight controller, um, but this will work with any other flight controller that uh, will run iNav firmware. So to do this, of course, like I said, you're going to need uh, a flight controller. You're going to need the USB cable to connect your flight controller to your computer. And of course, you'll also need um, a stable version of iNav Configurator. Now, as I'm making this video right now, the current stable release is version 5.1. If you don't have it installed, you can download it here at github.com at the releases page. And if you're not familiar how to do that, I've got another video uh, that I've made that shows exactly the steps of how to go and download the software and get it installed on your computer. Once we get into it, you may have a situation where for whatever reason, the flight controller either doesn't connect to your computer or isn't recognized by your computer. If that's something that happens to you, I really recommend that you try a different cable, maybe two or three different cables. If you're still having that same trouble, take those same cables and try them all again on a different USB port on your computer. And then if you're running on a Mac, I'm sorry, I don't know much more about it that I can suggest to help you, but if you're on a PC, there is the possibility that this Impulse RC driver fixer can help you out with a connection that's not working. And I've got it linked here and I'll put a link in the description as well so you can check that out if you need to. Now, the steps for flashing the firmware are very straightforward. Once you've got the configurator installed, and I'm assuming that you do, you'll start up the configurator. You're going to choose the option for flashing on the screen, and then follow the prompts on that page that will let you choose the correct firmware for your particular flight control board. Now, the version that I'm using is a Matek F405 WMN flight control board, but for that particular board, the firmware version is F405 TE. And that's because there are a group of different flight control boards made by Matek that use the same firmware. So you can't always go by the name of the flight control board when you are choosing the flight control firmware. You'll need to check the specs from the manufacturer of your own flight control board to make sure that you're choosing the right one when the time comes. Then we'll go through the rest of the steps, which is make sure we're choosing a chip erase. We'll load the firmware from online and then we'll flash and reboot. And those, those are the steps. That's all it is. It's a very simple, straightforward process, which I am going to walk you through here just in a minute. All right, how do we do it? It's really simple. We're going to go over, we're going to start iNav Configurator wherever it happens to be uh, installed on your computer. And I actually have it already running. If we choose Firmware Flasher, we will, present, we will be presented with this page. Okay. And this is where we start going through those basic steps. Up here, we have to choose the board that we want. Now, I know that it is a Whoops, Matek, uh, what did I say, a 405 TE. But by putting in Matek, it already eliminated a whole bunch. I'm going to come down here, Matek F405 TE. That is the version of firmware that I need for this particular flight controller that I'm using. I'm going to choose which version I want. I'm going to choose 5.1, which is the version of the firmware that's the most recent stable release. I'll make sure that the click here is on full chip erase. Okay. Now, at this point, I have not even yet connected my flight controller. So I'm going to do that right now. I'll just <clears throat> connect on here through the USB port. You should hear a connecting sound which tells us that the board is now connected. And what I will now do is come down to the lower right where it says load firmware online. 
So I'm just going to click that button and it will go onto the internet and download the firmware that we need to flash. And now we can scroll down through this window and we get some of the details about this particular version. And we can see that at the very bottom, it tells us that it has successfully loaded the firmware. So now is when we get to flash. And I'm just going to say this again. If you are somebody that needs to back up your settings and things because you've got a flight control set up already on your board, do not flash now. Make sure you've taken care of the backups. I'm not going to walk you how to, how to do that. That's not the point of this video. But if you click flash firmware right now, you've been warned. So the next step really is just click flash firmware. It'll disconnect. You'll see that it says erasing. That erases the chip. It does take a few moments. It switches over. Now you see it says flashing. And so now it's installing the new firmware onto the flight control board. And again, that will take a few moments. And when it's done, we should see very quickly it will flash over to something that says verifying. And that process is usually quite quick. So we won't see it for very long when it happens. did the verifying process and we get the message programming successful All right and now if we come up we can see here on my machine now it's got an extra communication port a com port number five and if i connect the firmware is installed and it's ready for its initial setup now i happen to know in this case that i'm going to be using this uh, with a flying wing so it's going to be an airplane without a tail so I'll just click on that as the initial settings. You would choose whatever is appropriate in your case. It's going to apply those settings and then reboot and connect back in again. And once we've done that, we can see that now we are presented on the setup page with a picture of a flying wing. And when I move the, the flight control board around and disconnect everything, um, we could see that it was moving around. Oh. Okay. And so that is all that you need to do in order to um, flash the iNav firmware onto a flight control board. Now, of course, it's not ready for flight yet. We need to go in and do um, setup so that it knows exactly what kind of craft it's working with and, and all of its particular components and, and features. But that's something for another video in this particular series. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.